Sri Chaitanya Vedal Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kidam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pichaya Nya Vishesha Sunyavari Pastyatya De Sutarane Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadahar, Sri Vasadi Gaur, Bhakta Vrindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So for the last, uh, from Sunday onwards, I mean, from Saturday onwards, we've been uh, discussing the uh, Srila Prabhupada's vision for farm communities, simple living, cow protection, agriculture, all in the area of Prabhupada's fourth uh, program. Prabhupada established three major programs um, the first was book distribution and Harinam. The second was opening up temples everywhere. And the third was uh, creating this whole process of initiation to bring people up to the standard of Brahminical initiation. And but Prabhupada's last, what we say, vision for the in society, which is in line with the uh, political, social, economic, aesthetic, moral, spiritual uh, aspect of the society and of the devotees is this process of living close to the land and uh, depending on nature for everything we need instead of depending on <clears throat> Con Edison or whatever particular we uh, agency here is here supplying our needs. So today I thought we do a little review in relationship to Prabhupada's statements on these on this subject. So what I'll do is I'll read a few of the statements Srila Prabhupada made regarding this. And then from there we can discuss it and, and comment on some of them. So what I'll do is I'll read a few, and then maybe we can, from there, we can decide. So I'm looking for some kind of feedback, some kind of uh, inspiration based on what Prabhupada says. So these are different statements. <clears throat> First statement, he says, create Vrindavan, keep Krishna here, cows here, calves here, produce your own food. It will become Vrindavan. This is Vrindavan. Where there is Krishna, where there is our cows, where there is agriculture, that is Vrindavan. You should produce enough food grains, enough fodder for the cows and live peacefully, chant Hare Krishna, make this life. At least one life we should do like that. It is very happy life. Okay, that's one statement by Srila Prabhupada. Another one. This is our mission, mission, cow protection and agriculture. And if there is excess trade, there is no profit scheme. For the agriculture, we want to produce our own food. We want to keep cows for our own milk. The whole idea is that we are ISKCON, a community to be independent from outside help. This farm project is especially for the devotees to grow their own food, cotton also to make their own clothes. Mm -hmm. Now, Prabhupada's vision for uh, simple living. Another statement, our mission is to protect our devotees from an unnecessary work, unnecessary heavy work to save time for advancing in Krishna consciousness. This is our mission. So there is no question of profit. But if easily there are surplus products, then we can think of trading. Otherwise, we have no such intention. We want a temple, a goshala, goshala, and agriculture. 
a community project. It's for America and for Europe. And I'll read one more and see if there's any discussion based on these four I read. Grains and vegetables are sumptuous fed. Grains and vegetables can sumptuously feed a man and animals. And a fatty cow delivers enough milk to supply a man sumptuously with vigor and vitality. I'll start again. <clears throat> Grains and vegetables can sumptuously feed a man and animals. And a fatty cow delivers enough milk to supply a man sumptuously with vigor and vitality. If there's enough milk, enough grains, enough fruit, enough cotton, enough silk, and enough jewels, then why do people need cinemas, houses of prostitution, slaughterhouses, etc.? What is the need of an artificial, luxurious life of cinema, cars, radio, flesh, and hotels? As this civilization produce anything but quarreling individually and nationally. Of course, we remember that from our, the purport from Srimad Bhagavatam. So these are four statements. And Prabhupada spent a lot of time in Gita Nagari, also in New Vrindavan, uh, speaking about, and also sometime also in New Taliban, speaking about simple living and uh, uh, Krishna consciousness. Um, any, any, any comments or questions based on these um, statements that I just read? If not, I can read some more. Okay. The next one. So our program is to live there, depending on the agriculture and cow, cow protection and agriculture. That should be the economic solution. And peacefully be in Krishna consciousness, chant Hare Krishna. That is the Vrindavan scheme. This human form of life is not meant for increasing artificial needs. We should be satisfied just to maintain the body and soul together. In balanced time, we should save for enhancing our Krishna consciousness or spiritual consciousness. So that after this body, we haven't got to make another material body, but we can go back home and back to Godhead. I'll read another one. City life, especially in this age of Kali Yuga, is very much polluted. Poet Cowper states that the city is made by man and the village is made by God. So in the village, there is a natural tendency for Krishna consciousness. So we want to develop such atmosphere in New Vrindavan. Your cooperation in this matter will very much encourage me. Okay. For the sake of the people in general, I'm requesting you pursue this farming life with great enthusiasm. Help people to see this traditional natural way of living. You must help them see how they can become happy. How can they go back to Godhead? So advance this project, plain living, high thinking. This modern civilization is so nasty, a nasty civilization, artificially increasing the so-called necessities of life. An art of unwanted, unbeneficial improvements. Okay, and I'll read another one. Civilization will collapse very soon, collapse very soon all over the world. It will collapse. Either you bring this ism or that ism, this civilization will collapse. People will become mad, being harassed in so many ways. When one is harassed in so many problems, he commits suicide. So that position is coming. Little prophecy. Next, now our next program will be the organized farming land to set an example to the whole world how people can be peaceful, happy, and free from all anxieties. 
simply by chanting Hare Krishna, Maha Mantra, and living an honorable life in Krishna consciousness. Our farm, farm projects are extremely important part of our movement. We must become self-sufficient by growing our own grains and producing our milk. Then there will be no question of poverty. So develop these farm communities as far as possible. They should be developed as an ideal society depending on natural products, not industry. Industry has simply created godlessness because they think they can manufacture everything that they need. And one more. Anyway, learn to love this natural mode of life, life in the open, wide open space. Produce your own grain, produce your own milk, save time, chant Hare Krishna, glorify the Lord's holy name. At life's end, go back to get the spiritual world to live forever, plain living, high thinking, ideal life. So what strikes me most about these statements is Prabhupada's advocating a very simple life which is conducive to Krishna consciousness. <laughs> For our way of living and our way of thinking, this seems quite radical and it seems too simplistic in some ways. But this is how Krishna lived <laughs> when he came 5,000 years ago, showed the example of how to live a more natural life depending on the gifts of nature. I was just listening to Prabhupada today. He was saying, um, this is based on the verse we read yesterday, the, lead, the, the mountains, the rivers, the streams, the herbs, everything is actually when there is saintly rule within the society and all these things profusely come forward and provide services. He says, every, every aspect of life has a service to contribute to the, to the greater whole. So mountains, rivers, oceans, streams, animals, uh, even animate, inanimate objects, they all are part of Krishna's big plan to allow for the living entity to somehow or other live in this world, separate from him. He's so kind that even though we leave him, he doesn't, you know, leave us. He sees what we need to live here. And he also gives us the plan on how to carry it out. And so basically it all comes down to a more simplified way of life. <laughs> it doesn't mean you can't have computers, cell phones, it just means we don't become dependent uh, or overly dependent on the secular world, secular society. People who live in nature are not under the lockdown. <laughs> they can go outside because there's so much fresh air around that it's very difficult for diseases, unless you are a carrier, to actually uh, proliferate in these environments. So disease is one of the anomalies of the sinful life of the living entity. And the reaction comes, and Prabhupada was saying this morning in the tape, he says, when people become very diseased, they become crazy. When they become crazy, they do all kinds of things. So um, I think people are starting to look towards this situation we're in now as becoming more and more intolerable in one form or another. And so it's breaking on all seams. Uh, nobody likes to be restricted. They don't know what to do because their restrictions are also counterproductive because the businesses cannot go on and the cities especially depend on business for the cities to continue 
Well, if the businesses are closed, and then the cities will also, those who are in charge will also be affected in a negative way. So there's a quandary. They, they want to lock down, but at the same time, they don't want to do it. So, you know, people are in a very confused state of affairs right now. Um, and if it continues, just like I, because we have more med medical science nowadays, they are, they are more able to come up with some kind of cures or some kind of preventions. But the Prabhupada talks about, you know, not Prabhupada, but even history talks about epidemics that hit the world and lasted for 50 years nothing small, where hundreds and thousands of people died. I mean, not, not hundreds and thousands, between 50 and 100 million people died in one epidemic at the end of the 16th century and the beginning of the 17th century. So um, these things are not new to the world, it's the nature. So Prabhupada's lifestyle that he's initiating here is generally for the benefit of the whole world and to actually get rid of this, what we say, anomaly of living the way we're living, just raping the earth from, with all the resources that the earth provides and making and manufacturing things people don't even need. And then many times people don't even want them. So they create advertisement, the advertisement Advertisement means to get you to buy something you don't know anything about or you don't even need. So using fancy words, pictures, and various, uh, what we say, sensual uh, displays, they attract people's mind to buy, to look into and buy things that people don't need. Advertising is one of the greatest crimes in the world because it's really, it's espionage, really. They're, they want your money, that's all. They want to get your money somehow, create products that you don't need, and they create the, the idea that you need them at the same time, and that is advertisement. Those of you who work in IT, you might also know that they're, the IT people are very much uh, in tuned with people's spending power, those in big company corporations. So they study the spending power of every individual. And then based on what they see, they send people uh, products on their computers or different ways to reach them to the media based on what they like to spend on. And so it's kind of like a secret way of getting into your life and finding out what you like and then trying to sell you more of the same stuff. So we live in a very, we don't need this kind of civilization. It's, it's deceptive. It's, it's soul killing. It's destructive. It's unhealthy. And as Prabhupada said in that one statement I read, the civilization will collapse. He also said, he said, um, people will be dying every day by the thousands. We're also seeing that right now because of the, you know, the fallout in the in Western materialistic society. But he also said something interesting, and you can take it for what it's worth. He said, "This Krishna consciousness movement will save the world in its darkest hour." So think about that statement. That this Krishna conscious movement will save the world in its darkest hour. I don't think we're in the darkest hour now, but the devotees know what to do. We know that people are suffering. We know that this lifestyle is uh, soul killing, counterproductive. But the thing is, if we don't create these enough of these farm communities, we can't show 
by example and by our own lifestyle how to actually live ideally and at the same time practice spirituality. Of course, you can practice spirituality in any situation, even in the middle of a, you know, a busy city. But what's conducive for uh, simple living, ha happiness, health, and time, time, usually if we live in cities, we don't have time for Krishna consciousness. We don't have much, to, enough time because where everything's thrown at us, especially those of us who have families, so many responsibilities that come with the family, all based around maintaining the family, the house, the car, the computer, the, the job, and all the things that come with that. So life has become quite complicated and confusing. So the principle of material life is it's boring. And there was a statistic, there was a survey that was done about, oh, quite a while back, that to determine what percentage of the people are happy and what percentage of the people are unhappy. The conclusion was that 5% of the people are happy and 5% of the people are unhappy and 90% are bored. <laughs> So boredom is another form of unhappiness anyway. But they put it in a separate category, bored. So what do you do when you get bored? Think of something new to do. Think of something different to do. So that's the whole idea. Whatever, just, just to make your life interesting, do something new, go someplace else, get something, buy something. Try something new, 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 new. That's material life because whatever you have and whatever you're doing gets old. You get tired of it or it wears out or it starts changing how it affects you. Because Krishna consciousness is ever fresh. The more you chant, the nicer it is. The more you read, the more you understand. And the more you understand, the more you become enlightened in spiritual knowledge. And where and then you can apply that knowledge in practical life. A Krishna consciousness doesn't require a lot of different things because each of the things that we do, as far as the main activities, when we enhance them, develop them, put quality in them, they expand unlimitedly and they, be, they perpetuate the happiness that they give you initially. It just perpetuates itself. That's the nature of spirit. Spirit is dynamic, material is static, material, material is old, gets worn out. Material is spiritual, you can do the same thing every day and each day it's a, it's a different experience, a new experience, a wonderful experience. And so in order to facilitate that, both from the material point of view and from the spiritual perspective, uh, Prabhupada understood that we can't live the way we're living now in these modern civilizations. They, they destroy all the good qualities of the living being. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful class, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, um, you explained it very well. Um, uh, even I feel uh, now I understood that uh, once um, one, once any person uh, gets advanced in Krishna consciousness, then only he can be able to get detached to this material world and uh, and uh, um, go into a simple living uh, lifestyle, Guru Maharaj. So that's my that's yeah. my. Yeah, attachment to Krishna brings detachment from Maya. And simple living is just, it's just, it's the nature of the living in entity. It doesn't mean you don't have variety. It means you just, in order to maintain yourself, you don't require much. It requires some food, some fresh air, some 
good water, some people around you, and that's about it. If you have nice food and you have nice relationships with everybody, you're happy. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. I can relate myself uh, with the word boredom um, previous to uh, coming into Krishna consciousness uh, because I, uh, I used to always say that I'm bored, I'm bored. Now I am not bored, I have a lot of things to do. <laughs> yeah. Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. But you're not only not bored, and you have a lot of things to do, but you like what you're doing, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. That's the difference. People don't like what they're doing, they just go, they just go through the motions. Because they're stuck in a in a in a in a groove that they can't get out of it. Yeah. I request devotees if they have any uh, questions or comments, they can go ahead. Thank you very much. Manisha Mataji, you can unmute and talk, Mataji. Krishna. Manisha. Oh, she said you need to unmute her. Okay. Yes, good Manisha. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam, all devotees, Dandavat Pranam. So my question is, I don't know how to ask it, please forgive me. I'm going to give a little example, so hopefully I can communicate my question. So say they're like a, our father, right? Like a biological father. So there's biological father there and child, right? And... Uh, father is busy like uh, you know working and then after work maybe taking care of bills or taking care of his elderly parents other responsibilities so child is feeling like oh father is ignoring me father doesn't have time for me so child just goes outside to play by the himself or something and he thinks oh my father doesn't love me i'm gonna go outside and find other things to make me happy but father has so much love in the heart for the child but um, father, you know, is just busy or something, but child doesn't see that love. Child just wants instant gratification, right? So in the same way, like uh, for sometimes like people, they say, oh, you know, why should I chant? Why should I do, you know, any devotional service? Like God doesn't care about me, you know, God, you know, is just ignoring me, but they don't know that God is always there with us in our heart and he's the only one that's like looking after us loving us always waiting for us to come back so if some devotee has like uh, anger towards god that okay if god loves me so much then why he sent me to this material world and like uh, away from him you know and i'm not there and go look dham with god and then the devotee is like saying oh you know um, I'm angry with God that why he sent me away from him, why he's ignoring me. He doesn't love me. He doesn't care about me. So like how to make that devotee understand that no, Krishna is always there with you in your heart. He loves you. He's waiting for you. You should turn your face towards Krishna, you know, and these are the ways like chanting devotional service. But still, if the person has like anger inside of them, like maybe some problem like they're not you know feeling ignored or not feeling loved or thinking like that then uh please advise guru maharaj thank you yeah mm -hmm. oh god is always there he's situated in the heart of super soul and he's guiding us but the question is if we're looking out outside 
for happiness and we can't find it inside. We can't find it in our relationship with God. Uh, it sounds like someone who's just uh, doesn't understand it. And they, maybe they had some bad experiences in their life. But God, he says, I am the well-wishing, uh, he said, I'm the well-wishing father of all living entities. So we put God in our own definition and we want him to respond just like a naughty child wants the parents to respond according to how the child wants the parents to respond. There's a whole philosophy of that. They put God in a certain box, and if he doesn't fit their definition, they say he doesn't care, and sometimes they say he doesn't even exist. But none of these things, these are all due to one's own ignorance and bad experiences in life. That's all. If you really, if you want love, if you want to feel God's love, just show God's love, just love, try to love God. He's, he's, he's giving us everything. He's giving us food. He's, taking, he's protecting us. He's with us every minute. We can't see it because we're looking outward and trying to enjoy material energy. We can't see what God is providing us just from day to day. So uh, because of, of, of this myopic vision, this narrow-minded vision, we, we have a misunderstanding of God's relationship with us. He says, Bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhidam sarva bhutanam shantanam yantam uchtiti. He says, I am the friend of all living entities. Only those who try to reciprocate God's gifts in the form of serving God, will they, they under, start to understand that God is with us at every moment. He's the closest thing to you. He's in your heart. But the thing is, we don't turn to him. We turn to our own mind for everything we want. Because we turn to our mind, we can't see God, and at the same time, we're, we're unhappy because our mind is not giving us the satisfaction that we want. It's more like a spoiled child that has his own idea of what the father should be. That's all. Thank but, you so much, Guru Maharaj. I'm yeah, sorry. but there's another, there's another statement. If you want love, give love. If you give love, you'll get love. If you don't give love, if you sit around waiting for love to come to you, it may never happen. <laughs> if you want love, give love. If you want, if you want to be, if you want to be, uh, if you want people to be kind to you, you be kind to others. Everything comes back according to how you projected from outside. If you're angry, then you'll see God as being angry also. You reflect your own mood upon everything and everyone. That's all. That's the nature of the mind. <laughs> uh, there's that story of uh, Narda Muni, and he's walking along, and he meets this one Brahmana. He's a smart Brahmana, very expert at doing his puja. And the Brahmana recognizes Narda. Oh, he's so happy. He sees this great saint, offers his respects. Well, he said, oh, Narda. And he, said, we, he starts offering nice words. He says, Narda, where are you going? Narda said, I'm on my way to meet Narayan in Vaikuntha. Oh, really? I have a request. When you're there, ask him, you know, how, how many lifetimes, how long will it be before I actually go back to Vaikuntha? And so Narada 
you know, he's listening. He, this man is a little proud. Nard is a little tolerant. So he says, all right. So he goes on. Finally, he meets this uh, very simple cobbler type person and he's sitting underneath the tree. He sees Nard, he gets up, offers respects, nice words, prayers, he's so humble. And then finally he asks the same question, Narda, where are you going? He said, I'm on my way to Vaikuntha to see uh, Lord Narayan. He said, oh, when you get there, ask him, you know, how long will it be before I can return to Vaikuntha? So same question comes from both men. They finally, he, Narada gets to Vaikuntha. He's with Narayan. And then he remembers the request. So he asks, and the Lord Narayan says, well, for that Brahmana, it'll be many, many lifetimes before he comes back. And for that cobbler, he will come back to me in this lifetime. And then, uh, Narada says, oh, he said, okay. He said, but they're going to ask me when I see you, they're going to ask me what we were doing. And then uh, Lord Narayan said, you can tell them I was taking an elephant and I was threading it through an eye of a needle. Oh, okay. So then Narada leaves, comes past the Brahmin again. Brahman is happy to see Narada, asks us if he came from the, yes. You see Lord Narayan, yes. How many lifetimes, what? Narada becomes a little hesitant. He says, he said, unfortunately, he said, you'll be here for many, many lifetimes. Oh, Narada, what are you saying? You didn't actually go to see Lord Narayan. This cannot be true. In fact, if you went to see Lord Narayan, tell me what he was doing. Well, he was threading an elephant to an eye of the needle. So the Brahmin starts laughing. He said, just see, you expect me to believe this. And then Nara just goes on. And so finally he comes to the cobbler and the cobbler greets Nara again. So the same in chain. And then he asks and Nara says, well, in this life, you'll go back home, back to Godhead. Oh, he's so happy. He's actually humbled by that. And then he says, well, what was my dear Lord doing? And Nara says, well, he was threading an elephant through an eye of a needle. And the caller says, oh, just see how wonderful my Lord is. Nara says, you believe that? He said, oh, yes, that's easily believable. And you see this tree here? This is a banyan tree. And there's so many fruits there. And each, each inside of each fruit, there's a seed. And each inside of each seed, there's a potential for another banyan tree. So in this one little fruit, there, there are so many banyan trees inside the seeds inside this fruit. So if my Lord can put a whole tree inside of the seed, then he can you know, thread an elephant through the eye of a needle. So this is an example of trying to see God in everything. Because God, when we actually see the miracles, not only in our in our own life, but in, in, in general, how the Lord is acting to make so many things happen. And then it becomes easy to understand that the Lord is with us every minute. And the more we chant, the more we pray, the more we serve the Lord, the more that becomes. As it says in the Shastra, uh, one, who, one whose mind is controlled, the super soul is already weak, reached. And from that person, he can see everything in this world without the dualities. He can see everything as being absolute. Well, that story kind of illustrates faith. People have no faith in God, and therefore they, don't, they only have faith in their own minds. The mind's always changing any day. Anyway, one day someone believes something, the next day the same person believes something different. One day I like this person, next day I don't like him. Vice versa. 
The mind cannot approach God. We have to approach God through the process given by God himself, and that is to worship God in devotion. Then you can experience the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much for uh, to you the priceless words of wisdom. Um, so I, you know, just understood that like the first example where I was saying that the child due to his own misconceptions, he decides that he doesn't want to, you know, pray to our father. He wants to just go out. So it's, it's our own fault. We wanted to enjoy in this material world. So we didn't want to, uh, you know, be devoted to God. We wanted to enjoy all these things. That's why we're stuck here, correct? Yeah, yeah. We have a two. We we have independence. It's called misuse of independence. But there's another world. Although we don't have any direct experience, we know there's another world which is eternal, full of knowledge, and full of joy. It's the world of love. The, the high, highest, the highest, uh, what we say, what is it? The highest aspiration of the living entity is to be loved and to give love. Try it in this world. Hardly anybody will accept that, only a few to give love and to be loved. You can find, when you find it in Krishna, then you can find it everywhere. <laughs> and love means to serve. To serve, to please. <laughs> Okay, so. Hare Krishna, uh, Deeptish Prabhu, I think you raised your hand. Uh, do you have any question? Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to you, Maharaj. All glory to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I just, uh, not a question, but just a reinforcement of what you have said is the more faith you have in Krishna consciousness, the more uh, faith you will have uh, to follow a simple living and uh, i think that kind of put more emphasis on me myself as well to read Prabhupada's books more diligently uh, and more regularly uh, uh, because only from that we would uh, develop that faith and hopefully some courage to adopt simpler lifestyles so thank the listening you and the hearing from Prabhupada, listening to Prabhupada, he inspires that it comes yes. by his purity. It becomes by his his vast knowledge of the subject. Mm -hmm. I mean, I lived on a farm for twenty years, but when I left there, they told me they said, "Maharaj, you're a city boy." <laughs> That's what they told me. <laughs> the leadership told me that. You know, I was there for 20 years. They could see I didn't fit in, but somehow or other, I tried for 20 years. But even when I was there, I used to go out and preach and come back. But we could see the benefits of it. And we know that For family life, it's ideal because it solves all of the difficulties that we encounter in, a, in this modern materialistic society, which has only created the difficulties.
material society trying to solve problems is that they create another, they create five more problems every time they try to solve one. <laughs> because if your whole equation is wrong, then whatever you do based on that wrong foundation, everything else is wrong too. The idea is that you can't be happy without God. It's just not possible, no matter what you try. We are intimately, eternally connected with Krishna every moment. We can't change our nature. That's our nature. The child might run away from the family, and he can do that. But still, his best interest is staying with the family. Yes, Maharaj. And uh, thank you for the inspiring talks over the last few days. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so we'll leave the subject after today. Tomorrow, we'll be doing some Bhagavatam classes with a joint group with another group and Friday the same. But keep this in mind, what we spoke about. And see, it's practical, it's possible. It's just means moving away from this lifestyle that we have created now, which is, which is really not healthy. We live in a very unhealthy environment. Sridevi Mataji, uh, would you like to ask the question or comment? Uh, yes, please. Thank you, Lavanya. Uh, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. Thank you again for another very illuminating lecture, uh, reminding us about Srila Prabhupada's instructions. My question is about solar panels, wind panels, all these new things that are being touted as the as answer for uh, fossil fuels and carbon um, emissions and global warming now we have to we have to turn to clean energy that's the latest thing what is your opinion of this guru maharaj be right with you Well, it's just one way to go. There are many ways to go. That's one. They've been doing it in New Rajadam for the last, I don't know, since they started the community back in the 1990s, solar panels. But the materials for making these solar panels and the batteries and everything, it's all the components is again coming from fossil fuels. Mm. So how are we making it, you know, any different? Well, you're getting away from, you know, your you're becoming more, once you get the panels, then you, then they, they take care of themselves. Whereas before you're dependent on 
be outside electrical powerhouses for whatever you need. So that means we can explore the possibilities of using these as energy resources rather than dependent. Have, have you, you've been to Gita, you've been to Nuraja Dam, haven't you? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Do you notice, did you notice anything about their system? Well, um, I definitely was impressed with uh, the, the, the way they live, how simply they live and how they really utilize everything, grow everything. I still don't know whether that is applicable um, everywhere is in other places, whether that can be replicated wholly and completely the way they have, I don't know. Now, what did people do before solar panels and what did they do before before electrical wires got set up? How did people live then? Very simply having, you know, lamps, oil lamps, uh, kerosene lamps for illumination. They yeah, were right. yeah. day and they went to bed at a decent hour. They didn't stay up half the night using electricity. Uh, it was a much better lifestyle because it was in movement with the nature's rhythms, the circadian rhythm of the body. Yeah, Prabhupada, actually, Prabhupada talks about that. Growing these, uh, what is it called? It's, it's a kind of a seed, castor seeds. Yeah, castor seeds and then squeezing them and making oil and then using that oil to light lamps, castor lamps. There's a whole article that Prabhupada, uh, the, the article is actually a talk that Prabhupada gave. Yeah, so that, I mean, people lived out with that. Just like what happened when uh, many times the whole electrical grid of the United States went out in certain sectors and everything got shut down. <laughs> It happened twice. <laughs> Actually, eight uh, was it eighteen days after Prabhupada got to America, there was a power blackout in New York, nineteen sixty-five. Every people were just sitting in darkness. There was no lights. Except for the during the day, and that was it. Yes, many were trapped in trains and elevators and had to be wait and had to wait to be um, released from all. You think you think we can continue exploiting nature and expect this to go on like this? No, Guru Maharaj, that is very obvious. It's a very, very dangerous time we are living in. You know, the recent hurricane over here in New Orleans made so many people homeless, literally on the streets. Everything is in shambles. Well, aside, aside from the natural calamities, in the, the electrical power systems are, 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 are basically, you know, you know, exploiting the earth and get telling the earth to get that energy. Fossil fuels and oil. Why do you think, you know, there's a big, there's a big envy towards the Middle East because they got all the oil. That could turn into a war anytime. So yeah, I, this you know artificial way of uh, lighting our houses like that. Solar panels are somewhere in between caster lamps and you know the. the, the the power grid that we have now, they're a little bit better. Because all you do, you put them on top of your building and they absorb the energy of the sun and they keep that energy there. And depending on how much sunlight you have, of course, it depends on sunlight. And you can uh, turn a switch on and you've got electricity, or you've got light.
Thank you very much. It's not ideal, but it's way better than what we got now. Okay. Any other comments? <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, I think uh, there are no more comments or questions. I think, Guru Maharaj. Um, okay, we can stop here. So tomorrow we'll be doing. Joint class with the Harrisburg group, and to the day after is with the uh, group from Charlotte. So that'll be Bhagavatam versus on Friday. Actually, we're going to be speaking about uh, Jiva Goswami. That's Friday. So I hope that's interesting to the devotees. Um, okay, we can end here.